Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at an Amazon colored mid-range deck titled Annoying Amazon, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And one of the build-around cards in the deck is Kaya the Inexorable, a 5-mana Planeswalker from Kaltheim that starts out at 5 loyalty, and the plus 1 ability puts a Ghost Form counter on up to 1 target non-token creature, and it gains the ability when this creature dies or is put into exile, return it into its owner's hand, and create a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying. Then the minus 3 gives us access to removal, exiling target a non-land permanent, and then the minus 7 ultimate is incredibly powerful, giving us an emblem saying at the beginning of our upkeep, we may cast a legendary spell from our hand, from our graveyard, or from among cards we own in exile without paying its mana cost. So that also includes Kaya herself, which we can potentially keep getting back over and over. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. Why is this deck called Annoying Amazon? That's because we have a ton of taxation effects and cards that prevent the opponent from doing stuff. At 2 mana we've got 2 copies of Draneth Magistrate, a 1-3 human wizard saying our opponents cannot cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. So this has a lot of different applications in standard, mostly prevents adventure creatures from getting cast after they've used their adventures. It also prevents the opponent from using their emergent ultimatum to good effect. Can also prevent the opponent from casting spells off their Showdown of the Skulls, so a lot of popular cards in standard are shut down by the Draneth Magistrate. Then at 3 mana we've got the full place of Archon of Emeria, a 2-3 flying Archon saying each player cannot cast more than one spell each turn, and non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped, and a lot of lands in standard these days are non-basic lands, so this has a very big impact on the game as well. And since we're a mid-range deck, we're usually only playing one big heavy hitting card per turn, so we're not too badly affected by the Archon ourselves. Then we also have the full playset of Redan, God of the Worthy, which we can play as a 2-3 legendary creature god with Flying and Vigilance, saying Snow lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped. So between Redan and Archon, the opponent's gonna have a lot of lands enter the battlefield tapped, and non-creature spells your opponent's cast with converted mana cost 4 or greater, cost 2 generic mana or more to cast, so this is very effective against some more controlling strategies. And we also have the option of playing a Valkmira, Protector Shield, for 4 mana, a legendary artifact, saying if a source an opponent controls would deal damage to you or a permanent you control, prevent one of that damage, and whenever you or another permanent you control becomes a target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless this controller pays 1 additional mana. So there's a lot of annoying effects that the opponent will have to play around. And then we've got two copies of Yasharn Implacable Earth, saying players cannot pay life or sacrifice non-land permanence to cast spells or activate abilities. At 5 mana we've got Elspeth Conquers Death, which on the second chapter also taxes the opponent for two additional mana for non-creature spells. And last but not least, two copies of Vorinclex Monstrous Raider, which can shut down opposing sagas as they won't get any counters, can also make it so planeswalkers enter battlefield with half as much loyalty, and can also prevent the opponent from getting a ton of plus one plus one counters going. So a lot of different taxation effects and cards that make it difficult for the opponent. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck. At 2 mana, besides Draneth Magistrate, we also have the full playset of Glass Casket as our cheap removal spell of choice, and the full set of Wolf Willow Haven, giving us a bit of ramp so we can get to our powerful Planeswalkers a turn sooner. At 3 mana, we already mentioned Archon and Raidan, as well as two copies of Mythos of Nethroi. Another one of the perks of being in the Amazon Colors is that we get access to this versatile removal spell that can destroy target a non-land permanent if we pay it green and white mana. Then at 4 mana, we've got the full playset of Binding the Old Gods as another versatile removal spell that also ramps us on the second chapter. And two copies of Yasharn, which besides being a 4-4 also helps us search a basic forest and basic plains card when it enters the battlefield, so helps us hit our land drops. And it also prevents us from potentially sacrificing our own Wolf Willow Haven to make a 2-2 wolf token, but that's not an interaction that happens very often. And then at 5 mana we've got a full set of Kaya the Inexorable, with a lot of legendaries to synergize with it, besides just getting Kaya back herself with the ultimate. We can get back Yasharn, can get back Raidan, as well as our one-off copy of Garruk Curse Huntsman, and the two copies of Vorinclex. Then at 5 mana we also have two copies of Elspeth Conquers Death as another versus removal spell, exiling target permanent and opponent controls with converted mana cost 3 or greater. On the second chapter taxes non-creature spells the opponent tries to cast for 2 mana. And then on the third and final chapter we can return a creature or planeswalker card from our graveyard to the battlefield with an extra loyalty or plus 1 plus 1 counter. 
Then we've got a one-off Garruk Cursed Huntsman, starts out at 5 loyalty, the 0 ability creates 2-2-2 two, two, two black and green wolf creature tokens, saying when this creature dies put a loyalty counter on each Garruk you control, the minus 3 destroys a creature and draws a card, and the minus 6 ultimate gives us a permanent overrun effect, giving our creatures plus 3 plus 3 and trample. And then we've got two copies of Vorinclex, a Monstrous Raider, as a very synergistic card in this deck as well. It's a 6-6 with Trample and Haste, saying if we would put one or more counters on a permanent or player, put twice that many of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead. So this is very synergistic with our various Planeswalkers, as they'll enter the battlefield with double the amount of loyalty, can ultimate them right away, so that's very powerful. And it also synergizes with our two Sagas, which will trigger both the first and second chapters right away. Then it also shuts down opposing Sagas, which won't trigger at all for as long as Vorinclex is in play. It makes it so opposing Planeswalkers come into play with half as much loyalty, and if the opponent's about to get a plus one plus one counter on one of their creatures, they don't get any plus one counters at all. So Vorinclex does a lot of work as well, and we even have some ways to get it back from the graveyard or from exile. And then going over the mana base, we've got four of the Arms Uncolored Triome, four copies of Fabled Passage, which can fetch two forests, two plains, and one swamp. Also one to plains and forest for Yasharn, so we'll typically keep those in the deck for as long as possible. And then all 12 pathways in the Arms Uncolors as well. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a nice opening hand. Haven into turn 3 binding potentially, and then turn 4 Kaya. So this wants to be white, this can be either black or green. Opponent with a Temple of Silence. Yasharn also a nice pickup, can help us hit our land drops. And birth. So this might be a more controlling, maybe Doom Foretold deck. Well, next turn we can plus Kaya on Yasharn, which is a nice value play. Acquisitions Experts probably gets to take my Haven here. And then we'll play Kayan plus on Yasharn. And try and protect our Planeswalker here. If our opponent runs out of Doom Foretold, we can sacrifice Yasharn, get him back, make a spirit. It's going to be a Solm Simulacrum instead. So something like an Elspeth Conqueror's Death could be annoying. But I think the play is play Archon plus with Kaya, and then probably cycle Trioman of turn. And otherwise we get to ultimate Kaya next turn. It's gonna be a tapped pathway because of Archon. And a Doomscar destroying all creatures, that's okay. Get a couple spirits, get our cards back. And we still get to ultimate Kaya, which is what matters here. And then for now, can go Yasharn into Archon. And our opponent concedes. I mean, we're gonna get to play Kaya each turn here out of exile or graveyard, so it's gonna be pretty difficult for the opponent to beat. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Lots of cheap spells, hopefully pick up some more impactful cards afterwards. I think I might hang on to my pathway since we're already starting to flood with a haven that can also generate extra mana. Opponent on the red green with a Lotus Cobra, which we're going to exile right away. Next turn I can go Haven plus Magistrates. Or we can run out Archon, although then we won't be able to double spell the turn after. Three mana, and it's going to be a path to the World Tree. All right. Opponent may be on a bridge deck, trying to play the five mana enchantment. Gets the swamp, read down the draw. Opponent's not playing any snow lands, but this could definitely shut down some more expensive non-creature spells. I think I stick to the plan of Haven plus Magistrate for now, just so we can double spell before playing Archon. Could also have played Raidan to play around an opposing binding to destroy caskets. Which is maybe a reason why they got the Swamp. And yep, there's Binding the Old Gods. Could also go after Wolf Willow Haven. And that's fine. Still gonna hang on to Trium, I think. And then for now we'll play Raidan. Opponent with the World Tree, so now their lands produce any mana. But they still can't play the bridge because of the two mana attacks. Opponent's gonna stomp Magistrates, maybe times two. Yep. So they will be able to play Bone Crusher now that the Magistrate is gone. Picked up her own binding. Um, could destroy the path, which threatens to activate next turn already. That seems fine. And then still hang on to my Triome, which we're going to cycle, especially after getting an extra land from binding. Points got their own binding for six mana. To take out Raidan. And Yashar in the draw, not bad. I think we'll leave the Triomes in the deck, although. Yeah, I guess Yashar getting a forest is still good enough here. And we've got another planes to search up too. That way, if we draw the Triomes, we can at least cycle them to good effect. So this would be a nice spot for something like uh, Vorinclex or Garruk or Kaya. Maybe an Elspeth Conqueror's Death, depending on what the opponent plays. We've got a lot of answers for enchantments if they are playing the five color bridge here. It's gonna be Waking the Trolls instead, I see. Well, we've got a lot of lands. Can hit for four. And then we'll play Raidan plus Archon here. And then I may end up playing the Triome just to give the opponent fewer trolls. Is 
your opponent can only cast one spell, and their non-creature spells are too more expensive. So Yaspera Sentinels, their only play for the turn. Alright, uh, let's see, opponent's got 6, 7, 8. So if I play my land, they don't get any trolls, that seems worth it. Now they could still have an instant in my turn, of course. I think we're fine playing shield. Opponents at 5. They don't get any trolls. And they still pay the 1 tax anyway. That's the shield making them pay the 1 extra mana. And her opponent explodes since they don't know what's going on anymore. Too many things to keep track of. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Haven into Yasharn into Kaya, maybe even a Vorinclex. So this can be green, this can be white. Facing a life gain deck. Got a backup Kaya, so black whites, clerics perhaps. Casket's nice. I think we stole your shurn first. And then we may or may not Kaya. If we draw a 3 drop, we can maybe double spell with Casket. Righteous Valkyrie, alright. Could just play Kaya. Exile Valkyrie, and then I can trade Yasharn for Speaker. And then they shouldn't be able to get to 27 to activate Speaker. Unless they've got a second Aspirant, which would be a bit of a disaster. So I think I'm okay using Akaya and losing her to my opponent attacking, since then we can go Vorinclex into a second Kaya and ultimate right away. So let's Kaya. And I think the safest option is just to exile Speaker, even though that makes it easy for them to kill Kaya. But yeah, second Aspirant makes this a 5-5. I don't have a good block. They go to 27, activate, make an Angel. That's kind of sketchy. That was an easy job. And then might as well attack. All right, second Valkyrie up to 22. More Kayas. Hit them for 10. And hopefully they cannot answer the monstrous raider here. Youthful Valkyrie is going to gain 6, up to 18. And another Aspirant. Can play Kaya, Ultimate, and Casket as well. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. I've got a fine hand. And then Magistrate prevents the opponent from getting anything back with Lurus. Archfiend's Vessel. 
yeah, I think we're just playing Magistrate here. Turn 3 Archon, turn 4 Haven. Double Serrated Scorpion. Now Manchester doesn't stop the opponent from reanimating Vessel with a Call of the Death Dweller, let's say. So I could just take the one. Yeah, I'm not really equipped to deal with a 5-5 five five next turn. Alright, now I can probably make that block. They can cast one spell. Our opponent makes a demon, which we can promptly destroy. Not going to have many targets for Conqueror's Death besides Lurus. Right down. And for now, probably want to leave the Triomes in the deck. And we can play Raidan as a creature. Sure. Can double spell, so can play Haven here because of Archon. This will grab a Swamp to keep Forest and Plains in the deck for Yasharn. Hateful Eidolon. It's going to be their only play for now. attack. So we've got a lot of hate cards here for Lurus between Archon not letting them double spell and Manchester not letting them cast anything out of the graveyard and on top of that we've got Conqueror's Death to exile Lurus. Right, they do have a village rights that they can cast end of turn and uh, don't think they're playing any untargeted discard they can't have Rankle because of Lurus. So, probably fine to play out my lands, and sure we'll make a wolf token too. Could die to a dead weight, but if that's their only play for the turn, we're probably pretty happy. So the flyers can keep attacking. Opponent could activate Castle Lochthwain, but that would also be taking a lot of damage. Don't want to kill the vessel since they might have another Call of the Death Dweller in hand. And for now we're winning the race with our flyers. So we'll take the one. Lurus we can conquer's death and that's probably gonna seal the deal here. I have to imagine. Send the wolf in there too. Heartless Sanct kills one Archon.
probably should have main faced Conqueror's Death, but wasn't really expecting a trade. So maybe they're gonna call the Death Dweller lures back out of the graveyard. Call of the Death Dweller brings back lures. And I guess we'll exile Lurus here. Hateful Idol on we can block. Might have a dead way to finish off Raidan. That's fine. Tank for three. And now we can block Vessels since if they reanimate it we can Mythos on the token as well. One goes to four. Yeah, Archon and Magistrate doing a lot of work here. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. A bit of ramp, some early creatures to protect our Kaya and make it difficult for the opponent to overpower us. Uh -huh, opponent on a Sanctum deck. Well, it's gonna make some of our creature removal pretty weak, but we do have also a lot of answers for enchantments between Kaya, Binding, Conqueror's Death, and Mythos. Opponent off to a nice start with a 1 and 2 mana Sanctum. So, next turn, probably play Raidan to make their 4 and 5 mana enchantments more expensive. Could also Binding. Not sure what they foretold. I think we save Binding for a scarier Sanctum. For now, just play Raidan. Protector Shield doesn't help against Stone Fangs, since it's uh, life loss and not damage. Right, and they had a Poison a Cup. Fair enough. Foretells another card. Guesses that's another poison cup. So could just Kaya and start plussing. And if we manage to ultimate Kaya, we can just exile the points enchantments turn after turn. Two mana for a Lithoform Blight, which can fix their mana at the cost of a life. If they have the Red Sanctum, which can deal damage to Planeswalkers, we can destroy it. And yeah, there it is, Sanctum of Shattered Heights. Plus Kaya. So they need another Shattered Heights right now, pretty much. They don't. And we get to ultimate. Can only play one Archon. And next turn we get to replay Kaya. And go to town. Probably another Poisoner Cup incoming. Gonna be a kicked thirst. Would have been an answer to Kaya, but arrived a little bit late to the party. You want a job done right, I don't think we minus, since I'm not too scared of these two sanctums just yet. Maybe next turn we'll exile Stone Fangs. And if I minus now, I won't be able to exile 
a scarier sanctum they might have. But we can make a wolf. And then now I can minus two turns in a row. Binding. Gonna destroy Kaya, which we can just replay. Grab our swamp, keep planes in the deck for your Sharn. Right, there's your Sharn. So do we want to minus Kaya now? I think we still wait a turn. And then... Uh, why can't I play a Sharn? I guess we've already cast Kaya for the turn with the uh, emblem, so that's why. Yeah, we'll just plus another turn. Now the tokens do stack, so now if the Archon dies we get two spirit tokens. Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, that's fine. And foretells another card. And then do I want to play Raidan or Yasharn? Um, I guess Raidan's decent. Makes their spells more expensive, although they have a lot of mana, especially now with a uh, Fruitful Harvest. So I think we decline, and then just play Yasharn minus on Stone Fangs. Could also play another Kaya and Minus, but we'll save that one for next turn. Opponent has a lot of mana. Doomscar to wipe the board, so we're left with a couple spirits. Cycles Triome. And we'll play a Sharn. And our opponent scoops it up. Kaya can just keep exiling their stuff. This turn we could potentially, you know, play our author spells before playing Archon, so we didn't run into the drawback. And there we go, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. We do have to make a decision here whether we want black or white, but definitely need green for Haven, so we're just going to go with green-white for starters. And then we'll eventually find a black mana for Garrick. Alright, so now that we found white, we can save the black. Next turn, play Archon. Opponent's Mono Black Life Gain. Maybe this is some sort of Colorless Ramp deck with Forsaken Monuments, as Remorse is going to have a look. Gets rid of Conqueror's Death. And now it doesn't matter too much which color. So all their colorless lands will enter battlefield tapped. And this turn can play another Haven, set up our Garrick for next turn. This grabs the planes. Now they can feel the ruin my enchanted land here to delay Garrick, but that would also be their entire turn gone. It's going to be a tapped Enclave. And a Stone Quail for three. Does have protection from multicolored. And uh, wolf tokens are black and green. We did draw a Casket, however, which is a clean answer for Stone Quail. And I could chump with Archon if I wanted to, but for now we can just make two wolf tokens. Keep Archon back. Stone Cold does have reach as well. We can just 
let Garrick take three. More tap lands, thanks to Archon. And a Myriad Construct for four. Alright, so how about we destroy the Construct and exile Serpents? Mythos also excellent, since we can cast it in the opponent's turn to circumvent Archon's drawback. Hit for six. And this can potentially take out a Forsaken Monument. There it is. No Ugin for you. Make more wolves. And then we'll play another Archon. If they have Extinction events, at least my Archons or my Wolves survive. Can't play Magistrate because of the Archon. Shadow's Verdict, however, would be pretty bad for us. It's gonna be a Crystal and Giants. And gets Reach. But our opponent is still dead on board here. So in hindsight, maybe they should have used Field of Ruin on our land, but there we go. Archon of Emiria once again doing quite a bit of work in the matchup. So overall, Annoying Abzan definitely lives up to its name, has annoyed many opponents today, and all those different drawbacks definitely add up, and there's some matchups where there's a lot of them that are very effective, like we saw against the Mono Black Lurus deck, Magistrate preventing Lurus from getting anything back, and Archon also very effective against a deck that typically wants to cast lots of cheap spells in the same turn. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.